Tony, you wanted rain? <laughs> uh, yeah, and we got it. Um, probably, uh, it, it could have maybe waited a bit longer than the South Island field days. <laughs> yes, yes, that wouldn't have, <laughs> no. wouldn't have hurt. No, no, um, <clears throat> yes, we did, we did get rain and it, and it um, hopefully dispels some of the myths that we, that we talked about last time that, that uh, you know, that irrigation is responsible for all these rivers drying up and sure it's a cont contributor, but you get a significant rainfall, which we got from the east or the southeast, and it pushes in against those hills. You know, if you look across the Canterbury Plains uh, from that rainfall that occurred, or even if you go into the Hawke's Bay area, where you look at what fell on the, on the flat areas, the lowland areas, the, the plains, and then look at what gets pushed in to the hills. So you get a rise in the EMS and you dump more rainfall in the, in the foothills and look at what fell, then it, 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 it dispels that myth that you know, it's, it's, it's irrigation that's caused this problem. It's the lack of those significant easterly rainfalls. And look across the Canary Plains, as I said, 60, 65 millimetres across the plains roughly. Uh, and then you get into the foothills, go up into the White Cliffs area or up into the foothills of the, into the um, tributaries of the, of the Ashley, for example, and we're talking 150, 160 millimetres. That is a significant rainfall in, in two days. Or Six not, not inches of 150. Absolutely. And that's why those two rivers, which, which, were, which have been you know, in the headlines in the media a lot in the last, in the last three or four weeks, suddenly flowed. Hello. You know, it rained, and uh, and that's a, that is very significant. So that will have that will have two effects. It means that the river's flowing. It's cleaning out some of the rubbish at the end of the river, if you want, out into the out in either into the sea or out into in this in the case of the Selwyn, out into Lake Ellesmere. But it's also water that's going into the groundwater system immediately. So we'll start to see some rise in water levels in the shallower bores that are. That are relatively close to the Selwyn River and and to those other frontal, other rivers. Same thing happened in the North Island. I was in the North Island last week, and and rivers like the Nadaroa, the Tuikuri, the Tuki Tuki River, all have those um, you know they love those easterly systems to get those rivers running, and they were all running full. So you know, there's the myth. Big headlines, of course, was Edgecliffe and, and well, Edgecliffe, oh, I should say, and that yep. sort of places. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, those though that's a rainfall that that uh, we didn't we didn't see that much of. I mean, that was you know that they got their rainfall coming in from the north and the northwest, and that was an immense rainfall. Um, yeah, very sad breaches of stock banks. Uh, everybody will be want, wanting their wanting blood here. Oh, they uh, will, and they'll get it. Yeah, and. Um, you know, a, a catastrophic failure like that is, you know, I mean, if you come into most of the rivers, you know, you look at even those rivers I looked at in the North Island and, and even the Waimaki River, for example, you know, we know where the weak spot is there and, and work has been done to try and strengthen that up. But you get a 500-year flood, which is what occurred in the Rangitaiki, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much outside the design parameters that, that these things have been built for. And, mm. um, <coughs> yeah, it's very sad. Um, um, but that was a very big rainfall, uh, and, and you can't contain it all in behind the Matahina Dam, for example. I mean, you, you can't have that over top. Uh, no. It would be rather messier if that overtops, so that water's got to be released. I mean, it, it's <coughs> controlling rivers. I mean, I remember Alan Evans from the South Canterbury Catchment Board being muzzled because he told me and I told the world that Tamuka and Pleasant Point were likely to be washed out to sea, and a, and a fortnight later it was. Oh, yeah, it's happened <coughs> before. Go back to, I think it was 86 when, I think it was 86. A uh, big, really big storm in, in South Canterbury completely just about wiped everybody out on the Levels Plains because the opening mm. broke its banks, took out fences. I remember a, a client we had down there, he said, oh, this is the third time I've started going back to irrigating because each time I, I get everything set up, thinking I've got the best system, another flood comes through and now I have to start again. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you know, but you know, it's happened before, and it will happen. <coughs> and again. It will keep happening. It will keep. It doesn't matter what you try to do to control no, nature. That's dead right. Very hard to control. Yeah. Yeah. How much more do we need, and when? Uh, well, I, I would like to see us get somewhere about another four hundred millimeters between now and August. 
Um, let's tick them off in 60 or 70 metre or millimetre or 80 millimetre lots. That's really good, it's those big slugs of water that we <coughs> get. Um, and, and I'm not just talking about the Canterbury area here. We're talking about places like the Hawke's Bay where we've got alluvial aquifers which we need to top up and we need that rainfall recharge there as well. Uh, so, you know, another another 400 odd millimetres, particularly in Canterbury, and maybe about half of that in Hawke's Bay would be really, they'll get much more than that, but that would be really handy in those areas. Uh, and then we start, then we will start to see some significant groundwater recharge and we will see the rivers, those foothill rivers that depend upon those rainfall events in the foothills, seeing them running in, in a continuous manner. Yep. What's Lake Opua doing? Oh, uh, well, Lake Opua, um, yeah, it started to fill up after this rainfall. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's the perfect, um, perfect storm for them. I mean, uh, a rain you, in the right place. A rain in the right place. It fell on the foothills. It, it's going to fill. Up, it'll fill up Opua very quickly. So they'll, they'll do some. They'll do some uh, power generation there this year. Tony, controversial as it is, what, what's the word on the street about big storage units and big storage plans? Um, look, the, the biggest one that that we've talked about before is uh, Rotanifa in, in the Hawke's Bay. Uh, looks like a decision for that is going to be handed down by the uh, Supreme Court uh, in, <coughs> in the next three to six weeks somewhere. Um, and then uh, and then the decision uh, will be to, as to when I think the green light gets pushed. I mean, farmers are saying, come on, you know, our water, water supply agreements uh, tick over on June the 30th, so it tells you that it's two years then, it's two years since the, the, they signed up for their water uh, to give the, give the project the, the green light. Uh, and um, and, we, and we're still waiting for the Supreme Court to make a decision. And this is all about land swap, for that, whether or not. Yeah, the, that's the right. Can you just recap concept. on that? Yeah. So this is about the Director General of uh, Conservation uh, agreeing that a land swap could be made to, uh, I think it's to drown out 22 hectares, and they were going to get three or four times that amount of land from Smedley Station because it's high country land that that was regenerating anyway, right next to the conservation estate. And uh, it was appealed by Forrest and Bird, uh, went to the Supreme Court. Two judges said, mm, not sure that he can make that decision. The other judge says, yeah, I think he can make that decision. And then they went away and said, hmm, maybe we should have another think about this. So it's now gone to Supreme Court. It just stacks up the cost, Rob. Um, you know, two years, down the, two years down the track now, that scheme, which was maybe 300 million to build, is escalated in price now. So then, what do you do with the water supply agreements that you had in place at three hundred million dollars? Yeah, doesn't be thinking about. No, it doesn't really, Tony. Thank you very much indeed. In just a moment or two, we're going to be talking to Dan from the South Island Field Days.